how's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, this one of them videos, I vowed and I promised the royal family that after that Amber Geiger fiasco, that again, that I would not allow myself to get emotionally invested in these cases. I felt like I had did y'all a disservice. And what I'm going to present to the royal family um, is going to be quite deep and epic and not shocking at all to y'all. And what I've been showing in these last, I'm going to say the last three videos, is all the local shit and all these games that they play on the chessboard, all right? And I pointed out how on the father's side of Mr. Arbery's family, they didn't, you know, basically gave him a piece of wood and some paper. And they didn't deal with them for 74 days. Now, all of a sudden, everybody rushing in to soften them up for the kill. Basically, you know, do you forgive them? Now, what I have noticed in this, that Mr. Arbery's mother, um, she is remarried. Nine times out of ten, you see her on her own. And she's very a matter of fact about what she is saying. And we shall see throughout this whole duration, will they be able to penetrate Mr. Arbery's mother? We shall see because we're going to see a lot of things in these cases. But on the true royal family and true royal, we not going to be thrown off about shit at all. Not one damn bit. In fact, while I was doing my deep research, what I'm getting ready to present the royal family, um, our queen, Carissa McKnight, um, send me something real juicy. Just on time, my queen. I thank you. So I have a bonus, let's say somewhat of some pictures in an article, you know. So basically now what's going on and been going on um, since they, you know, they working on the family. Now they, you know, they working with us. And, um, and I'm going to point out where they've been working um, with us and how we can lose sight of the very thing that we seen when he was slaughtered. That's all we need to keep on our frontal lobe. Not all this shit about even Trump was saying this stuff about, well, we don't know what happened before we seen the video. No, that, that's irrelevant. No, what happened is what we seen. And see, that is the enemy's ultimate goal to keep you off of the prize. And see, the thing is, my royal family, on a spiritual level, on a spiritual level, we need, we don't need the collective but we need enough of us to keep our energy on what we sing. Not all this other extra shit we shall overcome and all of that. Uh-uh. We're going to stay focused and fucking hardcore over here. Because they got me fucked up if you think that you're going to fool the royal family on this one. Keep your energy there. We may possibly have a different outcome. But ultimately, Yahweh has the say so let me point some things out so we've been seeing okay this weekend they had a justice um for arbery and folks is pumped up doing what black folks didn't did for it looked like a, a, a hundred thousand years get out here and march and wear yourself down out just to get a slight inkling of anything done this ain't no different than when martin luther king was alive we shall overcome and all of that i'm tired of marching but let me point something out to y'all let me take this back down real quick so they out here protesting pumped up and then here come um this you know they use this slogan either i'll uh, jog with Aubrey. I've seen him say, I'll jog with him. I'll walk with him. I'll, and people are showing videos. You see celebrities doing um, their part. So where's the celebrities at? 
Where is them players at? Where is the ones that they pull out? Let me pull, let me pull up this one so y'all can see this one. Show you how they getting down. Getting down and how they um, dominate. Shit like this. Just just for, for Mr. Aubrey. You know, oh, now Esau's so vastly concerned. You know, these are the players in it. You know. And some of these people can mean well, but they don't even realize that they are even being being um, being used um, in this process. Um, I was listening to um, a sister, beautiful sister. She has a channel called The Blackest Truth. And she said all these little symbolic things that they are doing where folks is getting out running, especially our own, she called it fluff. And I looked into that and I said, you know, that girl, that girl is absolutely right in what she's saying. Um, that is ain't nothing but some fluff. That ain't getting nothing accomplished. So as usual, we see the players here. Oh, okay, now they demanding for justice. This ain't nothing new. What the fuck is new, you know? Ain't nothing new. This is the, they priming us. They priming us, okay? And you know, you feel like, oh yeah, I didn't really did something. You know, like handing them, again, a brick a bracket, something a little or no value. At first, nobody didn't want to have shit to do with anybody. You know, we don't, it's like, we don't even know what the fuck to do, but I'm going to tell you what you're really supposed to do. You even got Oprah's fat ass out here. Oh, I didn't did something. Okay, she didn't walk for him, all right? Bitch, you ain't did shit. Because you a killer case too, just like the rest of them. So they, it's the usual suspects, the usual players, and all of that. And they'll donate some money, and I never know where the money go, you know. But, you know, we, we're, we're, we're out here doing things. Let's see here. Yeah, this shit right here gets on my nerves. This, this bullshit right here. This, this, this shit irks me. Fucking irks me. I done seen this as long as I've been on this planet. Oh, yeah. We'll do something symbolic. So that's the thing now. You have a t-shirt with his name on it. You know, he got a special day. But again, they didn't have nothing to do with that family for 74 days. And when you add it up again, that's the number 11. And in the word, number 11 means chaos, disorder, and judgment. So it's the same equivalent out here with folks running and marching and everything. Then what is supposed to happen after the fact, after you march and run and wear a fucking t-shirt. So, as we continue on, I want y'all to listen to a video and I want y'all to play very, very close. Attention, because this shit been getting on my nerves for a, for a while. And I will point this out. Now, this video was done May 8th. Okay. Sufficient probable cause for arrest of father and son in shooting death of Mr. Aubrey. And they kept repeating damn near every article I read, every video that I read, how quickly they made an arrest. Oh, they don't have nothing to do with no 74 motherfucking days. I don't care if y'all made an arrest real quick. Oh, yeah, we really checked into it and damn. We made an arrest real quick. You ain't did shit, but waste our money. They work for us. So listen to the language, the language. You know, they trying to act like they didn't did something so impressive. You can't impress me. My royal family, you come from royal stock. You should demand premium you can't impress me i'm noble i'm royal so you take your pompous ass and get on your motherfucking grind i don't care what they present us they could never meet our standards Good evening and thanks for joining us. Bond has been denied for the two white men who shot and killed an unarmed black man in Glen County. WTOC crews have been in Brunswick all day. So you come out the motherfucking gate talking about Bond has 
been denied. That is not etched in stone. And I've been saying it from day one once they were arrested. Oh, it's going to come back up again in this video. I'm going hardcore. I know y'all saying, what's she on? I ain't on nothing. I ain't on nothing. It's what they own. You can't meet our standards. That's what we need to have in our mouth. When they throw with these things that they throw up in our face. Embrace your royalty. Get your ass up on the throne and stay your ass up on the throne. And as the, these peasants present things, you just, you know. Okay, really? What else you got? So you hear how they coming out the gate with this? This is all orchestrated. Following the very latest on the investigation, we begin with our right gas away. Dawn, it has been an emotional few weeks for this Glen County community as they tried to get national attention on this case. They finally did a couple of weeks ago, and now there have been two arrests made. The writing was on the wall earlier this week when the GBI took over the case, given the very public statements from the governor and the GBI director. Now, two men are in jail. Well, a judge officially denied bond for Gregory and Travis McMichael this afternoon. The former law enforcement officer and his son are charged in the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. Graphic cell phone video led to a national uproar over the case and the fact that no one had been arrested. Earlier this week, the governor and the GBI director called the prosecutor on the case and asked if they could help. Director Vic Reynolds says no amount of social media pressure led to the charges. None of that matters to the GBI. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter who the victim is. It doesn't matter who potential defendants are. Reynolds says all that matters are the facts and the law. In this case, Reynolds says the video makes it clear. We applied the law to the facts in this case and came up pretty quickly with it. With a, with a solid belief that this there, there's is sufficient probable cause to charge the McMichaels with felony murder and aggravated assault. The Glenn County Police Department handled the original investigation. The agency now faces renewed scrutiny over their willingness to prosecute people in the law enforcement community. The GBI can only investigate at the request of a local agency. Some say that should have happened much sooner. Reynolds agrees. In a perfect world, would we prefer to have been asked to become involved in February? Of course, but sometimes it isn't a perfect world. So we have to deal with the situation as it's placed in front of us. The agency has veteran agents working this case. Reynolds did not rule out more arrests, saying this about what his agents will do when the national attention eventually subsides. And they're staying in this community. They're gonna to continue to work it. And they're gonna go wherever the facts take them. If in fact the facts take them to make another arrest in this case, then they will do that. Don, there is a lot to unpack here. The GBI can only come into an investigation like this at the request of the district attorney or the investigating agency. The Glenn County Police Department never made that request. Tom Durden, the prosecutor now over this case, is the one who made that request earlier this week. In his remarks today, the director did not make it seem like the GBI is working on this case now with the Glenn County Police Department. Instead, he says they took their investigative file and essentially started over with what the Glenn County Police Department had done. It's peculiar given the fact that the GBI normally works hand in hand with the original investigating agency. While the GBI director was addressing these arrests under the Sydney Lanier Bridge this morning, friends and family of Ahmad Arbery were gathering at the Glen County Courthouse where they were celebrating his life and also demanding that the district attorney in Brunswick step down. Now, Amanda Aguilar was at that rally today. Amanda, what a sight there today. Well, right, Ahmaud Arbery would have turned 26 today, and people held balloons and they had signs wishing him a happy birthday. Today was the first time for many, especially those that never got a chance to know him, to learn about the kind of person that he was. Now, we heard from friends and family. They all say Ahmad was a respectable young man, never left anywhere without saying, I love you. And after sharing their memories of him, they held a balloon release and loudly singing happy birthday. And I was able to speak to Arbery's cousin on the phone today. He wasn't at the rally as he's been supporting Ahmad's parents, but he says that he would like to see his cousin's life celebrated every day, whether that's through fundraisers, scholarships, even marathons. Demetrius Frazier says he just wants positive change to happen. Ahmad's 
tragedy may not change a lot that's going on in the world, but it would be the spark to 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 uh, the spark to the brain that changed the world. Now there is another balloon release scheduled for tomorrow. That's at one p.m. The public. Now you see that, my royal family. I'm not knocking them doing something symbolic on his royal day because these people have dealt and co will continue to deal with a lot of heartache. But them interviewing his, co his, his cousin, that's all he could come up with. That's all he could come up with because we have no power. We don't have an economical base. So you talking about scholarships and, and jogging and all of that. Them people don't care about that. They'll put, they'll, you know, they'll give you that little placard and everything and be snickering because let's not lose sight while they're doing all those things, all those things behind the scenes. They're doing nefarious things. They'll, they'll hand you that placard and smile right up in your face and you getting stabbed in the back or getting basically fucked dry. It's really, really tragic. So I, I'm, I, I mean, I might, you know, be coming out the gate a bit hard on the family. But when you see the same repetitive shit over and over, because the things that I'm going to present to y'all, y'all going to be like, whoa. So let's continue on. My goodness. Is invited to that at 12. That's going to be held at Sydney Lanier Park in Brunswick. Right back to you. Amanda, thanks for that. I, for one, was certainly impressed with the number of people there, thousands of people there outside the Glen County Courthouse. Amanda, thanks for that. It's important to note here, there's a lengthy timeline. This shooting happened back in February. On February 23rd, part of the reason people are so fed up is that they felt like this arrest should have happened much earlier. So the shooting happened on February 23rd. The prosecutor now on the case is a man named Tom Durden. He is in the Atlantic Circuit, located there in Hinesville. He got the case on April 13th. Then fast forward to May 5th. That video leaked out early that morning. And then later that morning, Tom Durden said he would, in fact, take this case to a grand jury. That same day, the governor saw the video, the attorney general saw the video, the GBI director saw the video. All of them shared disgust at what it showed. The GBI director reached out to Tom Durden and said he wanted to be involved in the case. The district attorney then did make that formal request. Fast forward to yesterday, May 7th and Greg and Travis McMichael were arrested by the GBI and by sheriff deputies at their home last night around 8.30, according to those arrest warrants. Now, we have gotten some more details about the second prosecutor involved here. The district attorney in Brunswick, Jackie Johnson, recused herself the day of the shooting. George Barnhill then took the case in Waycross. Jessica Savage is now breaking down that recusal letter he sent to the attorney general. Jessica, what is the AG's response, and what does that letter say when, when he did recuse himself? A lot of the criticism in this case has been about District Attorney George Barnhill of the Waycross Judicial Circuit. Now, he was the DA who received the case by appointment after the DEA in Brunswick recused herself because of a conflict. Now, for the first time, we have a look at why he, too, stepped away from the case. Here is what Barnhill said in his recusal letter to the Attorney General. He has a son that works for the Brunswick DA, and unknown to him, until about three to four weeks ago, his son handled a previous case that involved Ahmaud Arbery. Now, Barnhill also pointed out that Greg McMichael, one of the men being charged, who has been charged in this case, helped prosecute Arbery in a previous investigation. Now, Barnhill also said in that letter, quote, a local rabble rouser took up the cause of Arbery and was spreading false information and calling for him to be removed from the case. And last night, in response to that public release of that letter we just read you right there, a spokesperson for Georgia's Attorney General Chris Carr sent this statement that reads in part, it has become clear to our office that the appointment should not have been accepted and it is appropriate that he is no longer involved in the case. Now the Attorney General has since appointed District Attorney Tom Durden in the Hinesville Judicial District. He has the case and he's the one who requested a grand jury review and the GBI's involvement this week. 
Jessica, the GBI director, a man named Vic Reynolds, was appointed by Governor Brian Kemp earlier in his tenure, and he's got a unique position. He was a prosecutor in Metro Atlanta. If there were 50 questions at that press conference this morning, I would bet 90% of them focused on that letter, the rabble rouser statement, the fact that George Barnhill thought this shooting was justified, which Reynolds says very plainly it was not, in his opinion. It was clearly a probable cause there for a crime to have been committed. So, once again, a lot of those questions focused on that letter sent by Barnhill, but Mr. Reynolds really tiptoed around it. He refused to, uh, I would say, straight on uh, ridicule what, what Barnhill said. He said he could not speak to what Mr. Barnhill may or may not have seen, only that the evidence to him seemed to suggest there was a crime of felony murder committed here. We've got the breakdown on this website, on WTOC.com. We've got the latest in this case. We've got the information about the first appearance here by the McMichaels, as well as all the letters you've seen referenced from Mr. Barnhill, as well as a timeline for you. We've also got that reaction all right, from all right. family and friends as well. on my fucking well. nerves. Okay. They're getting on my fucking nerves. Now, keep in mind that that video that I presented was May 8th. Okay. And I'm showing the royal family the energy around this with your celebrities, with your politicians, or just people that generally are disgusted with the same fuckery that we have always seen in America. So I'm, you know, I'm showing all of this energy, all of this stuff. You know, let's not keep nothing. Um, out of our frontal lobe. I want I want y'all to keep that right there, you know, real, real tight. And what we don't see is the cops that was on ground zero. They It's like they a phantom, like they ain't even existed. That That's who I would want to, you know, hear from. So they, 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 you know, they got them tucked someplace. And I really think a lot of this is such a waste of time. And like I said, at the end, I'm going to tell you what, what really need is supposed to be done um and everything and um but as far as what the family is doing in regards to his royal day i know the family has to do what they do because they're grieving and everything but the thing that i don't like that i keep harping on is that these damn lawyers um have you know they season in they season in this fuckery and everything so again keep in mind what i said all this energy build, build up. They looking like, oh, look at all of these vast things we have done. We're running, we're marching, we're praying, you know. Um, um, we're getting to the bottom of this. Look at this timeline. Y'all ain't did a motherfucking thing. Again, we come from royalty. We ain't impressed. So after they gather up the energy, then here we go right here. Um, wait a minute. There it is right here. Now the time to pass Georgia, um, hate crimes act. Oh, now it's time. So it take all of this to do all of that. And that ain't no guarantee. And don't lose sight. But the bond thing, I'm gonna keep bringing up stuff. Because I, I, I'm saying, we're going to focus on what we're going to focus on. But this is, they, they priming us, damn it. So, now it's time for what? Really? 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 So, I got something for the royal family to listen to. Why are they trying to prime us up? Okay, here we go on to the next phase of this fuckery how these folks really really get down so i got an audio for the royal family to listen to and it's necessary to listen to what they saying now they have this republican who they hand picked and i cannot pronounce his last name chuck i never seen a last name like that but here's old chuck and his last name is spelled e F-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. That's a tongue twister for me. I can't pronounce it. I ain't going to try. So, Kemp then handpicked this Republican. You know, look at him. He looks, you know, looks innocent. Don't be fooled by them innocent looks. I'm telling you something I know. So, we're going to hear this um, interview 
that they um, that they did with him in regards of the hate crime bill. Okay, this audio was done on the 11th. Please pay attention to language. As this reporter is interviewing him, pay attention to what he not saying. Because he's very deliberate in a matter of fact in the way he speak. You know, so here we go. What's going on here? Of Ahmaud Arbery, Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr says he'll ask the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate the handling of the case. In a statement released Sunday, Attorney General Carr said the public deserves a, quote, complete and transparent review of how the case was handled. This after a video of Arbery's shooting death became public and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation took over the case. Attorney General Carr is asking the DOJ to look into communications between two prosecutors who recused themselves from the case. A.G. Carr says his office will turn over files regarding its process for appointing the prosecutors in the case. This is Closer Look. Closer Look continues now here on 90.1 WABE. This is Atlanta's Choice for NPR. I'm Rose Scott. There are four states in the nation without a state hate crime law. They are Arkansas. Georgia, South Carolina, and Wyoming. There have been attempts before for a state hate crime bill to be passed right here in Georgia. Opponents often cited there's no need because the federal hate statute is enough. Now a video has emerged revealing the shooting death of a black man, 25-year-old Ahmaud Arbery, by two white men, Greg and Travis McMichael. And that has led to a renewed debate regarding whether or not Georgia needs its own state hate crime law. But this time, there may be bipartisan support. Joining me now is longtime Republican Representative Chuck Efstration, who also chairs the Judiciary Non-Civil Committee in the state legislature. And Representative Efstration, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Morning, Rose. Thank you for having me. Let me get your thoughts. I'd like to get your reaction when you first view the, the cell phone video of the, the altercation, which obviously it does reveal the, the death of Ahmaud Arbery. I was deeply concerned when I saw the video. I think the reaction, which was an outcry for the Georgia Hate Crimes Act, uh, really came at a time when uh, the legislation is pending at the Georgia Capitol and there's an opportunity for action due to the suspension of the General Assembly session. So in 2019, the Georgia Hate Crimes Act passed the Georgia House mm -hmm. and it's been sitting in the Senate Judiciary Committee since March of 2019, hasn't received a hearing yet, hasn't received a vote. And the interest from the public as to why does Georgia not have a hate crime statute on the books? Why is this gap in the law continuing to be in place? Really, I think has brought renewed focus to the need to pass Georgia's Hate Crimes Act. And Representative, you have supported a number of measures with the focus on criminal acts that violate others. I, I remember last year, you were a sponsor and supporter of an anti-human trafficking protective measure that had bipartisan support. What will be different, you think, this time with possibly passing a state hate crime law here in Georgia? I've worked extensively in the area of criminal law reforms, and that's because of my past experience as an attorney and an assistant district attorney prosecuting uh, felony cases. And what I've seen is we need to update Georgia's criminal codes to reflect what we're seeing uh, out there in, in practice. And a big part of that is uh, criminal justice reform. And I served on the Georgia Council on Criminal Justice Reform and carried anti-human trafficking legislation, as you mentioned. But also, it's updating Georgia's law to address a Georgia Supreme Court opinion, which made Georgia's Hate Crimes Act invalid. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been in place for almost 16 years now. And the need to 
update Georgia's hate crimes law to provide the specificity that the Georgia Supreme Court called for, I think is really important. That's what this legislation does. Like many other criminal statutes, judges are allowed to give enhanced sentences based upon the victim that was targeted in a case. So examples might be domestic violence, Mm -hmm. exploitation charges, things like that. We already have that in the law. The hate crime statute didn't specify uh, the detail that's necessary in order for prosecutors to apply the law. And that's why the Supreme Court overturned the law in 2004. So we have an opportunity now to update that statute, fix it, and there's broad bipartisan support to pass this measure. That's what's really exciting about this. I'm a Republican, chair the committee that handles criminal law updates, but um, there's great uh, co-sponsors that are working together with me on the bill, Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why we have a unique opportunity to get this passed this year. The General Assembly will reconvene in the coming weeks. And uh, when that happens, the state Senate can take up House Bill 426, the Georgia Hate Crimes Act, and pass it so that we can finally fix this area of the law and Georgia will no longer be on that list of four states that don't have a hate crimes act. Representative, as it relates to that update, is that something that you are going to make sure you are going to help draft that language for the update? Yeah, it's already it's already been passed by the Georgia House. Right. The language has been drafted and as mentioned there were there's great support where we addressed any concerns about um Uh, whether it's inconsistent with criminal justice reform and whether it provides the specificity needed for important application. And so that language uh, that's now before the state Senate has been carefully drafted and has been uh, really reviewed without any, I'd say without any objection to the framework in which we're putting it forward. There's policy debate that's occurred But the language, I think there's been consensus of support. If you support hate crimes legislation, then you support House Bill 426. What's your response to, in the past, and this is, we've heard it before, that, well, there's a federal hate crime statute, and that should be enough. What's your response to that? The federal hate crime statute doesn't apply in many circumstances when a person viewing a case would say this is clearly a hate crimes act. Georgia police reports, uh, the uniform police report, includes a checkbox for hate crimes, yet there's no law that would allow law enforcement to actually charge a particularly heinous act for what it is. And so my response is that it's important that we update state statute to reflect the specific concerns that we have in the state. And criminal offenses that are committed where a person is targeted because of uh, his or her class that is of particular concern. And judges and prosecutors, law enforcement, and society needs to be able to call it what it is, which is a hate crime. Another concern has been with some state hate crime laws that often there are protections left out for those who identify in the LGBTQI community. Would this also include protections for pretty much any demographic, any group, if it's based on you know, an act that is perpetrated based on dislike of race or ethnicity or sexual orientation or what have you. Yes, and just specifically last year there was a case in DeKalb County Mm -hmm. where a victim was killed and the perpetrator made the statement that he was being killed because he was gay. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, this bill, if passed, would apply in cases like that. What, What I think we really have to do is appreciate that not all criminal offenses are are the same. I'll just use graffiti as an example. If somebody does graffiti of their own name versus somebody writes a hate message or a swastika or something like that in graffiti, those are really two different crimes. One is what we would call criminal trespass under Georgia law. The other is a direct attempt to intimidate part of society, to try to cause fear and harm others. And I think that that distinction is what the law should recognize. Criminal offenses can't be classified properly without a hate crimes act on the books. You're an attorney. You also understand that 
there are rights for those who are accused. And we've heard people argue, well, how can you, if you don't have enough evidence to suggest that this act was committed solely because someone didn't like someone's skin color or their sexual orientation or their religious views, that that is often very hard to prosecute. With a state hate crime law, you've got to be really careful that if you're going to start using this, that you can actually get a conviction. Well, that's a that's a great question. And what this act does is it allows for what lawyers call a bifurcated trial. Mm -hmm. So first, a prosecutor would have to prove the underlying criminal offense beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury before hate crime is ever mentioned to the jury. So first, a conviction must occur. Only then would a jury then take up the issue of whether or not it's a hate crime. And that's because notice would be given to the defendant in advance of trial mm -hmm. that that enhanced sentencing is being sought. And a jury would then, on the issue of whether it's a hate crime, have to determine beyond a reasonable doubt, unanimously, that the perpetrator committed a hate crime. So protections are in place to ensure that due process is maintained. This is not a new criminal offense. It's mm -hmm. just allowing classification, when appropriate, after conviction for a, another violation of Georgia law. I want to switch gears for a moment. Representative Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr is asking the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate how police and prosecutors are, are basically handling the shooting death or have handled the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. You support A.G. Carr's ask of the DOJ? I do, but I think that we have a great opportunity in Georgia to really look at criminal offenses and criminal procedure that maybe uh, requires update in Georgia law. So what I expect we'll be looking at in the future would be the citizen's arrest statute, other statutes that are particularly in play here so that we can really examine whether Georgia law needs to be updated in, in several of these important areas. So I do support the attorney general's uh, decision, but I think we have work to do in the coming months and years in Georgia as we look at our own state statutes. Well, and let me get your thoughts on this then. What about how police and prosecutors handled when this initially happened? The fact that several district attorneys recused themselves. There was an instance where it was believed that Travis McMichael, you know, under the Stand Your Ground statute, which may be another statute the lawmakers will look at in, in the future. And so it's prompting people with claims of a cover-up. Do you see that there needs to be some investigation into how authorities in Glenn County handled this initially. I was deeply concerned when I viewed the video and I thought about what if the video hadn't been released. And so I do, I am deeply concerned about criminal investigations. And I think that the review that's taking place by the GBI and potentially federal authorities soon, I think is a good thing to do. I don't, um, I can't speak to the specifics of any one case, sure. but just watching the media reports, I'm deeply troubled by how how it took this long for uh, for action to be made. And I think that there's an, there's going to be an opportunity, as I mentioned, to really look at Georgia's criminal procedure and how cases are reviewed with respect to the the law that uh, we vote on at the state capitol. And so that, uh, that review going forward, I think will be uh, very important to consider. And I look forward to hearings on that in the future. Finally, Governor Kemp has been, just a few days ago, quoted as saying, conversations about legislation are already underway and we will work through the process when the General Assembly reconvenes. Uh, that's gotta be some good news for you. How optimistic are you that whenever you and the fellow lawmakers return that you can get finally get this measure passed and get it to Governor Kemp's desk for his signature? I'm very hopeful that the state Senate will take this up as soon as possible, pass the Georgia Hate Crimes Act as soon as we're back in session. And I appreciate the governor's comments uh, by showing openness to the Georgia Hate Crimes Act. I think that that helps to encourage and support passage. And so although there's I'm sure a great deal of work going forward, just like there is on any legislation uh, when we're working to get it passed. I'm uh, very excited by our prospects to 
do the right thing to get the Georgia Hate Crimes Act passed in 2020. There's been so much made that when you all do return, there will be a focus on obviously dealing with some particular outcomes, which we may not know what those are due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, the budget's going to be one. Do you have any concerns that this measure could get lost or, you know, have to go back to committee or what have you? Or do you have any concerns that it won't get taken up by the Senate or passed because you all are going to be focused on so many other things related to the pandemic? So the Georgia House passed this legislation in March of 2019, and I just say that to just mention that the ball is really in the Senate's court right now. It's pending in the Senate Judiciary Committee. As I mentioned, it didn't receive a hearing in 2019 or so far in 2020 in the Senate Judiciary Committee. So I, I think that the public interest and outcry for the need to have a hate crimes law in Georgia I think we'll encourage members of the state Senate to take up this good bill and pass it. And I believe that uh, they have the ability to to pass that very quickly and get it to the governor Mm -hmm. in in short order. So I I really think that the need is clear and that we've uh, worked so carefully on the language. It's now time to act. This bill needs to be passed. I believe, is it Senator Stone that's the chair? That's right, yes. Have you had conversations with the senator? Okay, I'm going to stop it for just a second because I've already heard this. Now, he said something very, very specific. The reason why that bill has not moved yet because they are concerned with the language. So they're tweaking it in such a way that we are not a protective class if it go through because he ain't saying shit if it go through i would like to read because the lgbt community is a protective class and line them up together if it pass and see how the language in it is totally opposite so that is the driving force they don't ever want us to be a protective class at all to the point where when they put these things together that puts more money in our community i mean these people are diabolical but we are in an election season and they don't want to piss off nobody so they got to find a way to satisfy the royal family and at the end of the day Esau so we shall see how this go down so what he's talking about is bullshit but he said that language my royal family as we continue on about this I have yes I mean I I am very interested in uh, discussing with any member of the state senate any questions that that member might have i think that that when information is provided to fully explain the need critical need for a hate crimes act in georgia that really a, a better understanding allows for straightforward support i think that the legislative process many times can be uh, can be slow and very deliberative, and that's often a, go- a great thing. When you're considering changes to the law, there ought to be extensive debate and consideration. But at this point, this legislation, as I mentioned, has been pending in the Senate for a year, mm-hmm. and there have been previous versions of a Georgia Hate Crimes Act, which have been considered over the past several years mm-hmm. and just haven't reached passage. So this isn't a new issue. The gap in Georgia law is well known because of the Supreme Court's opinion uh, vacating the existing Georgia law and and uh, and so it's it's time to act the state Senate I think has a real opportunity here to send a strong message that Georgia is no longer going to be one of the four states without a hate crimes act that we're going to empower law enforcement and society to call particularly heinous crimes what they are and I, th- I think the opportunity for passage this year is is great Republican represent. Okay, my royal family. So we didn't heard all the word fluff and everything. And 
when people are listening to these things in the media, because, you know, the media plays their part, too. You know, if you're not paying attention to language, some people will be like this. Look at this right here. A start towards victory. A start towards victory. So you gotta you gotta pay attention to this language, how these folks get down. A start towards victory. Ain't nothing ironclad in this. You heard this damn demon talking about they've been working on that for a while. I know what I'm talking about on this. Like many of us, you know, you don't re require for you to have a damn degree. All you got to do is have an experience in America and you'll get caught up just on that word victory. Like, um, something has been done. We got a long way in this. Like I said, it's all kind of moving parts behind the scenes. So they priming, been priming us and also the tainting the jury pool. And our folks been messed over so much. We out here running and accepting plaques and screaming and hollering and marching and, and all that. And it's ridiculous just for them to do, do their fucking job. But it's old too, because let me just re reserve myself because I'm going to tell the Royal family what really needs to be done. So now this is what they like to do throwing fear tactics to as well. Now we're going to listen to uh, Travis McMichael's um, very high power attorneys. Father and son remained in jail for the death of a Brunswick man. We're talking about Ahmaud Arbery. Grant McMichael and his son Travis have retained lawyers for their defense in the Arbery case. Last week, a disturbing video that you see here of the shooting prompted the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to look into the shooting. The McMichaels were arrested days later. Today, an attorney spoke for the accused shooter, Travis McMichael. On your side, Troy Kless joins us live with more tonight. Troy. Thank you, Anthony. Attorneys for both Greg McMichael and Travis McMichael. We heard from them for the first time today. And attorneys for Travis McMichael are saying that their client is innocent until proven otherwise. Robert Rubin and James Sheffield, attorneys for accused shooter Travis McMichael, speaking Thursday. When asked why their clients felt the need to confront Arbery in a, quote, vigilante way, they say they are working to learn exactly what happened that day. We understand that what you're saying is one of the thoughts, opinions, or maybe the facts that are being expressed out there. Um, what we're learning is there's a lot more information out there. There's a lot more information that will answer that particular question. They say that not every fact about the case has surfaced. More than two months went by before Ahmad Arbery's killers were arrested. Video shows the confrontation between Arbery and Travis McMichael that ended the 25-year-old's life. Two days after the video was released, the GBI arrested the McMichaels, now facing charges of murder and aggravated assault. Macon attorneys Franklin Hogue and Laura Hogue, representing Greg McMichael, issued a statement Thursday saying while Arbery's death was a tragedy that at first appears to many to fit into a terrible pattern in American life, this case does not fit that pattern. They say the full story, to be revealed in time, will tell the truth about the case. The Hoag's attorneys for Greg McMichael say they plan to host a press conference tomorrow morning. Now, both legal teams are working to set a preliminary hearing in front of a superior court judge in order for a bond to be set. Those dates have not been set in stone yet. We're live in Brunswick tonight. Troy Kless, First Coast News, on your side. Troy, thank you. We have much more on this case on our website, firstcoastnews.com. Now, did you hear what he said? See that about that, that bond? See, they're working on that. They're working on getting them out. They just got to get the right judge. You know, the right judge is going to do what they're going to do. They already going to know what it is, and it's going to be 10% or whatever it may be. So don't be surprised, my royal family, if um, they get out. Now, these these attorneys, I see something funky that might even happen. Um, so um, the father got his own attorney, and the um, the son got his own attorney. 
and stuff. Now, before I say anything about that, they saying this shouldn't be played. It shouldn't be played out in the media, out in the public and stuff. Well, what the fuck you talking for? You know, telling us it ain't what you think it is. And there's much more out there. I wouldn't be surprised. Because a red flag didn't hit up in their little world that the father be gangster enough and let his son take the whole fucking rap. Because that dude look real confused like what's going on. You know, he know his son's slow. That, 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 that kid ain't never did nothing in his life. The only thing he ever taught him to do is shoot a, uh, shoot a gun and um, to be racist to the fucking core. But that father is that kind of grimy. He, he, he subbed to give up his son. You know, it's like it can get down to that. Like who we going to sacrifice um, in this? How we going to satisfy the masses, you know? And um, and um, because it's just it's just too many people it show you how esau can make something so messy all you gotta do is your motherfucking job you know that's all you gotta do now um what i wanted to say before i showed this bonus um little article and picture is that um we eventually and i don't know when that space and time will ever come is some things that we need to do in this war. And the very thing that we have to do is stop giving up our energy. Because I said in the beginning, if we continue to focus on what we seen, because what they want to do is take you away from that. Like that, that, that didn't even exist. Be interesting to see how the outcome be when our energy is not all over the place. And we need to, Speak as little as possible. I said long ago to my sweet husband, I said, never let an enemy know your strength or weaknesses. Keep them wondering. They know our movements in this chess game. All right. Now, let's get to the bonus. As I'm doing my research, Carissa McKnight sends me this. Now, look how the media get down. When you first initially look at it, you'd be like, oh, damn. So did uh, Aubrey, Mr. Aubrey, date white girls? Well, as far as I know, no. Well, let me read this. Woman whose brother and father have been charged with murder of uh, Mr. Aubrey insists they are not racist because they loved her non-white boyfriends. And she says she is scared for her life after receiving death threats. But look how they set it up. Look how they set it up. Look how they set this shit up. When I seen that, I was like, damn. So what y'all on? See, the media play their part too. You know, that's to piss some of us off. And lose focus on exactly what we just seen. So they playing us. So like I said. Work on the family. Work on the public. Priming us. You know knowing these things will irritate us. But we going to focus. On what we seen. All of this is a distraction. Y'all not going to pull that shit over here on the true royal family. I'm game tight. And I cannot do this without the royal family. I need all of y'all help. Put on our de de detective hats. Use our wisdom. We are empathic. We feel things. Honor what you feel. But don't let these motherfuckers redirect energy. We keep our energy where it need to be. We demonstrate our faith to our father. And we'll see how it comes out. Because at the end of the day, whatever way it go, America will never be the same again. As we watch America implode on thyself. Now, Rona is global, but Rona is right here in America, affecting 
your immediate situation. So you ain't never learned and you ain't never got it amongst a pandemic. Now check it out. The father, he ain't healthy and the son too. But you got enough energy, enough demonic energy to take out our royal son. Now you bring it in. We don't even know if this is real, if this is his daughter or not. Because how can he produce that and that? And you get them two different outcomes. I question what moms was doing, you know. That may not even be her daddy. You just never know. Now she's scared. We don't give a fuck about you being scared and we getting slaughtered in the streets of America every millisecond. It's business as usual in America. See, Rona is the equalizer. And there will be other plagues to come, Esau, because you want to keep doing what you're doing in your system. You want to do this to infamy. And then you insult our intelligence and tell us, oh, it's much more out there. We didn't heard that bullshit. You on some bullshit. We know what we're going to focus on. And you talking to royalty. You will never meet our standards. That's how we conduct ourselves, my royal family. Embrace being royal. Don't let nobody um, just throw a little trinket up in your face and you satisfy. They can't satisfy us. Ever. Ever. Like in the word it say we will be richer than nations. They don't have the they don't have that type of power to make us richer than nations. Cause they little raggedy nation is just, I mean, look look like a hot ass mess, you know. So I just wanted to present that, showing how the media get down, all the moving parts and all the games that they play. And, you know, somebody might see this and not even read the damn article and say, oh, he was dating white girls. I guarantee you that'll come up. That'll come up. That'll come up. And not even read none of this shit, you know, not even reading it because they place that shit deliberately like that. You know, that's why I deliberately do what I do and say what I say. So my royal family, render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.